All right. Now, this one from Michael. Come on, Ron. You know better than that. Uh Uh-oh. I think I'm getting chewed out again. (laughs) The 223 Remington is not, emphasis is not, the uh, same as the 5.56 NATO. It is a different cartridge, and you are dispensing false information by saying that it is. (laughs) All right. Chastised. (laughs) Let's clear the air on this one a little bit because it it just keeps popping up as a perennial question. The 223 Remington case cartridge, the whole business, and the 5.56 NATO have the same dimensions, same Rim diameter, same body, same head, same length, same shoulder. Everything is the same. But there is a significant difference that could get you into trouble if you intermix, especially if you try shooting the 5.56 in a 223. Here's the deal. The 223 was set up by Remington before the 5.56 was officially adopted by any militaries. So the 223 was the civilian version. And Remington figured, what do most civilians want to? 22 caliber for? Well, they're going to be shooting rock chucks and long range varmints and such. So we're going to give them what was in that era in the 60s, a popular bullet size, 50 grain, 55 grain, 45 grain, maybe a 60 grain, but I don't remember any 60 grain bullets in the early 223s. Well, the military comes out and they're looking for whatever performance they need in warfare. And that calls for a heavier bullet, which has to be obviously a longer bullet. So when they chambered the AR style rifles, which of course weren't really the AR-15 rifle, this was the full military M16 thing. And they had to chamber that a little bit longer for those longer bullets. So here's where you get into trouble. You take a 5.56 with a, say a 70 grain bullet or some other long bullet, and you shove it into the chamber of a 223 Remington, which was probably throated for the shorter bullets, you could end up increasing pressures by either driving the neck and or the bullets into a tighter space in the chamber. Either the neck's going to maybe be intruding into the uh, uh, neck throat area a little bit, or more likely, the bullet will simply be engaging the rifling back there. So that increases your pressures at launch. In addition, a lot of folks will say the military brass is a lot heavier or thicker, so it can withstand more pressures. I don't know if that's valid because every manufacturer changes his brass qualities a little bit differently from others. So some of them are a little bit more malleable. And also the internal dimensions change from brand to brand. That's why hand loaders are always taught to be consistent in what they are loading. If you're working with Remington brass or Winchester or Lapua or Norma, stick with that brass for all of your loads. Don't go willy-nilly changing from one to the other because it could change your pressures based on the volume internally, even though the external dimensions are the same. The internals could change. So the safest way to to look at this is to say, okay, yes, dimensionally, the 223 and the 556 are the same. Internally, they could be significantly different or at least a little bit different. But the big problem is those longer bullets and you don't want to be shooting the 556 in the 223 chambered rifles. You could easily get away with 223 in the 556. Might not be as accurate because the bullets are going to be shorter and jumping a lot farther. But most guys with 556 and fast twist barrels are successfully shooting the lighter, faster bullets through those from a 223. Um, it's not as much of a problem and certainly is not a pressure problem as it is the other way around. So let's uh, stick to that. 223 should not be fired with 556 five, ammunition. <laughs> Unless you're custom loading things, and we're not going to get into that because you've got to pay attention to all sorts of dimensions there. All right, justified there, Michael. You got me. Appreciate the correction, and I hope this uh, straightens things out for folks who are listening. 